Good morning, everyone. It's Tiffany here, International Healer and Transformational Teacher. Thank you for joining me in day one of the Empowered Empaths Challenge. So this challenge is for anyone who have been told they're too sensitive or someone that is really sensitive to other people's emotions and the energy around them. When you complete this challenge, you will be entered for a chance to win a free healing session with me. It's valued at $120. And there's three things that you need to do to register. So one is registering yourself on the, re uh, the registration page that I will link in the video next to the video. You also need to comment on each video so I know that you did take part in the challenge. And number three is the winner is going to be announced at the end of the challenge and the session has to be redeemed within 30 days. So I am so excited to share with you what I have learned on my journey as an empath. I had no backbones. I was struggling with depression and anxiety, and I really didn't know what it meant to be an empath and even how to empower myself as an em empath. So I think the biggest challenge that empaths, light workers, and star seeds we struggle with is creating healthy boundaries for ourselves and being assertive. So if you are an empath watching, if you star seed or a light worker and you are here for a purpose, you're here to make the world a better place and that you're ready to create radical change and rapid ascension in your life, comment, say hi to me. If you are an empath, type in yes in the comment section. I want to see who are my fellow empaths on my page. So let's dive into the session today. A lot of times, right, empaths struggle with saying no, right? Having a healthy boundary works in different areas of your life, your interpersonal personal relationships, intrapersonal relationships, and also energetically as well. And a lot of times we are taught to say yes. If we don't say yes, we are not a nice person. So now I'm asking you to shift your frequency to really step into your power, right? Imagine what it would be like for you to be able to manage your energy system efficiently so that you don't run yourself down to the ground while you're helping others or while you're on the job servicing other people. Right? And feeling that you are still grounded and centered within your body securely and feel this power deep down to your bones. Imagine what that would create for you in your life, right? Okay, so usually the reason why we have trouble saying no is because of fear. And this is where I want you to Take a deep breath and center yourself towards your heart and your soul. Shift yourself out of the mind for a moment and just feel into your heart. Asking yourself, what does the word no means to me, right? What do I associate along with the word no? Logically speaking, no is just a word. It's N-O, two letters, but why is it, why are we so afraid of it? Why is it such a bad word? And I'll give you some example. For example, if you are someone that has struggled with being bullied in school, which I have, I know what it's like, uh, being slapped in the face and called ugly and the bully telling any, everyone in the class not talk to you, to isolate you. So maybe saying no in your subconscious mind is associated with rejection, right? With shame. It comes from being bullied, bullying trauma. Another scenario is your fear of the word no might be coming from a place of punishment. So of course, all of our parents try their best, but sometimes, you know, um, they may come across as like when they say no, it means that you are in big trouble or you're a bad girl or you're a bad boy. 
So what you need to start to understand is that when you internalize that belief that I am a bad girl, a bad boy for being angry, for crying, what your parent really meant was that the action was not really helpful, right? If you, if you were me, who was like a rebellious child who always wanted to say no, if my mom tell me to eat, I would not eat. And when she say, uh, maybe if she say things like, oh my God, you're such a bad girl, you don't listen to me, then a person might internalize it and think that there's something wrong with them. So shifting to asking yourself what happened instead and shifting to the perspective that I'm not the bad person simply mean that the action that I did once uh, a while ago in my life was not helpful, right? Also, the third thing that usually working with students and clients is when it comes to facing the fear of saying no is feeling unloved. Hi, Magda. Good morning. Hope you are having a good week. I miss you. Haven't seen you in a while. Anyway, so feeling unloved, right? So maybe saying no means that a certain person in your childhood refuse to give you love. So you associated the word no with this, right? So for people that are joining in, doing a quick summary is facing your fears in regards to saying no. So what does the word no mean to you? Does it mean rejection? Does it mean punishment? Does it mean being unloved? So when you internalize this and think, okay, when I say no to people, it means I'm punishing them, I'm rejecting them, or I'm showing that they are unloved. So you have this trouble, you have this resistance to say no, because you don't want them to feel the hurt that you felt when you were a child in your past. So, so what happens is empaths, we think that we have to say yes, even if it means energetically poisoning ourselves, right? But how using these words or having other people energetically poisoning you with the energy or words doesn't serve you, it doesn't serve the people around you, right? What you really need to understand is I want you to comment this and really bring it into your mind, like write it in the comments, say it out loud, write it out so you have this energy in your energy field is the mantra you can still be kind and be able to say no right a lot of times for me i associate it if i wanted to be a nice person i can't say no well that got me nowhere so my association of the word nice caused me to say no so I needed to shift my mindset. So instead of nice, what can I be instead? I can be kind, I can be generous, I can be um, attentive to people, but I don't need to always say yes. So stick it in your brain. I can be kind and still be able to say no. And think of all the powerful leaders in your life, right? They are able to honor their needs. They are able to know what they need. So you need to get clear on what is not being met in your life. A lot of times when we struggle with depression and anxiety is a signal to let you know, hey, there's something that's not being met here. So what is it? Get clear on what is it that is your emotional needs. For some people, it's you know, quality of relationship, whereas for others is quantity of relationship. They want more friendships rather than more intimate friendships, right? You want to practice asking for what you need. And if you were like me, who were very timid and introverted and really passive, and I used to let people walk all over me without saying anything because I wanted to be nice, you need to start practicing and in the beginning it's gonna feel really uncomfortable and it will even make you really scared of course right i used to find myself uh, in this situation where i would find co-workers that used to bully me and they would be mean to me and i didn't know why they would only target me and not anyone else is because of my energetic frequency i was closed down so of course energetically they're going to find me as a match to <laughs> bully and be mean to 
So when I started working at my last company, I really just stood into my power and be assertive with the person that wasn't so nice to me. I said to her, you know what? I don't appreciate you speaking to me in this way. It's not kind. And, you know, as a person who works in, on this team, I really shouldn't be treated this way. And I was so scared saying that to her. But you know what happened? She went speechless. And she just kind of stormed up the room. So I was standing in my room feeling really proud of myself, being able to stand up for myself. My heart was beating. I was sweating. <laughs> it was not easy to do. Because sometimes we have this other blockage where we think, right, being assertive means aggressive in our life if you have been suppressed if you have been rejected you feel if i become assertive i'm going to be that person who's aggressive who's going to be that bully so you need to swing your pendulum from one side to the middle learning how to be assertive and knowing that it's okay to do that it's okay to honor what you need it's okay to ask for what you need and what's the worst if people do say no to you right no put it in your head right now listen carefully means next opportunity so and oh next opportunity so when someone say no to you you automatically remind yourself okay it means next opportunity this is clearly not in alignment to me i'm going to find something else that is in alignment with me and those goes with finding a uh, room to stay finding a job or finding a relationship right hi zoe Okay, and the next point I wanted to talk about is you need to stop bending backwards to please other people, to overgive. I know as an empath, it's really easy for you to overgive, but you need to stop that because you are draining your energy, you're tiring yourself. And if you're tired, how can you go out there, hold space for other people who actually want your help and your energy for healing, right? And in my journey, not only did I not have a backbone, I also always bend backward for people. And I live that lifestyle. I do not wish it on anyone. So being able to really step into your power, right? Feel the power rise from your sacral chakra, passing through your solar plexus, the heart and out the throat, right? Expressing what you need. And one of the lessons that my mom taught me, she said something to me that shook me to the core. And that made me cry just thinking about it the other day. So I was letting people treat me like garbage in a lot of abusive relationships. I was bullied. I had a difficult childhood with my father. And there was a lot of anger, a lot of you know, uh, rejection, abandonment. So I would find myself in an abusive relationship over and over again. And I was letting these guys treat me like garbage, even though I'm an honor student. <laughs> I think that, you know, I'm a good person. I don't understand why these people are treating me this way. I was in the victim mindset. My mom sat me down one day after another relationship. And the worst thing about these relationships were they were dumping me. <laughs> so I was wondering what's wrong with me. And my mom said to me, she's like, listen, Tiffany, I didn't go through nine months of pregnancy, hours of painful labor, years of nurturing and love for someone else dare to treat my daughter like garbage. And when she said it to me in that moment, it didn't fully register in my body, but now I fully understand. I was like, she's right. When I let people treat me like garbage, not only am I disowning myself, rejecting myself, abandoning myself, I'm also letting those people treat my mom and basically other women in my life the same way. I'm letting them know, you know what, it's okay to treat us this way. And this can apply to men as well, but I'm just using myself as an example. So you need to step in your power. You, need, you owe it to your parents. You owe it to your ancestor and your lineage to stand in your power and not let people treat you like silver, 
not let people treat you like bronze. They need to treat you like gold. Treat you, hold space for you, for you to be the golden goddess, for you to be the golden divine warrior. And this is where going back and understanding your lineage help. And I'm just sitting there coming to a realization a couple of days ago. My ancestors used to lead armies. They found their fortune and it was taken away from them in the Vietnam War. And they came here with nothing and they built their future for their children. How can I not honor myself? How can I not honor my worth? So I want you really to take this in. Next time someone wanna step over you again, it doesn't matter if they change their ways or not, you need to express how you feel. It doesn't matter if a landlord yelling at you, which happened to one of my dear clients, but she stood up for herself. She told him that is not okay for me to treat it, me this way, right? Whew, wow, that was uh, a lot of emotions coming out. I love my mom. I'm really, really connected to my mom. So from that day on, I'm just like, nope. I'm not going to let people, I'm not going to let this guy think it's okay to treat me, treat my sister, treat my fellow goddesses this way. It's not right. Okay, so the last point for today is a long teaching today. Um, is start taking responsibility for your life, right? Become a woman on fire. Become a man on fire. Hi, Megan. Thank you for joining. How are you guys today? I needed to affirm to myself, if you see my video yesterday, for me making a defining choice in my life. I declare to myself that I will not let my past define my future. I will not let being raped, feeling dirty by this man who has no honor, dictate how I feel in my relationships. Why should, be, why should I be afraid of sex because, what he, because of what he did to me, right? Why should I let him have that power over me? And it took me years to come out of that healing. And it's okay to take the time for healing. But there comes a point when I'm just like, enough. Enough of going into this downward spiral of shame and sabotage. Enough of finding myself dating the shitty guys over and over again because that's what I thought I was worth. Enough of that. You need to declare to yourself right now, I will not let guilt and my past dictate my future. Say it out loud. Don't be afraid of other people's opinion. When you shift, I guarantee you when you go from your passive self, your old self to the more empowered self, there will be people that fall away and that's okay. Those are not the people who are gonna be able to hold space for you as you ascend. It's okay to gently let them go. And then a lot of times they come back for you. They see you change. They see you embodying a different energy. And they come up back to you. They wonder, well, what did she do to bring herself in this space? So everything stops with you. Stop carrying other people's burden. When I work with clients, one of the biggest thing I see is that they carry their parents' trauma. They carry the burden of, I need to make my parents happy and sacrificing their own happiness. Deep down, that's not what your parents want. Your parents want you to be happy. They want you to feel empowered, be able to stand on your own two feet and be grounded. A lot of times you have to show them what it means to be happy for you, right? So stop, stop carrying this energy back pattern from going, you know, having no backbones or bending backwards for other people to standing firm in your power. I want to see you shine. Do you know how much, how good it feels to see other women stand in their power, see other men stand in their power? When you can be the example, you give permission for the people in your life to be in this light, to rise to their brilliance. 
not only do you help people of the same gender, you're also showing your opposite gender of how to treat you. I'm with my twin flame now, but it is because I rise to my goddess power. I let the power from my yoni go up through my throat and I become that. In my old days, I used to look for someone to save me. Why can I have a warrior prince to save me? Enough of that. I said, if I were to attract the divine warrior that I want, how do I need to be? I need to raise to that vibration. So I spent time working on myself, getting myself to that vibration and become a match of what I was looking for. So yes, you can do it. Yes, give you permission to do so because you are so worth it. You are in own of it. You are deserving of love. So that was today's teaching. So I hope it has been helpful just to uh, recap. Right? The challenge for today is for you to gain really crystal clear on what is your top emotional need. Then practicing asking for what you need and you're going to feel fear and that's okay. The third thing is asking yourself, what does my body need? What does my body need? Really bring it into your mind. Whenever you find yourself ungrounded in anxiety and depression, what does my body need? Thank you, Zoe. Thanks for tuning in. Zoe is a um, yoga teacher and she shares with people the knowledge of essential oils. So feel free to check her out. I'm sure there's an essential oil to make you feel more powerful. <laughs> For me is um, the lavender oil and also the geranium and makes me tap into my divine feminine energy. So, so crystal clear on what you need, practice asking for what you need and practice asking the question of what does my body need? And that is your challenge for today. And I want to see it in the comment, come back to this section and answer that question so I know that you have done your homework. Even right now, ask yourself, what does my body need? And type it out, right? Right now, I will do it with you. My body needs food, my body needs water. After talking for so long, I need some water. So that's what I'm gonna do right after this live video, okay? And I would love to support you and help you become accountable with this challenge. So join us, if you not have not already, in the Empowered Empaths of Light. That is my private Facebook group where I've gathered a group of amazing empaths and light workers. So you can share, be seen, be heard, and connect with one another. And if you have any questions, comment in this video or in the group, and I'll be very, very excited and happy to answer your questions. So let me just check the comment to see if there's anything I missed. Thank you, Magda. Thank you so much for joining me and watching. Camp Blend. Ooh. So peppermint and wild orange. Wow. I don't have wild orange. I would love to check it out, actually. Hi, Scott. Valora. Oh, I had a Valora at one point. It is really beautiful, too. Amazing. Thank you for joining me in this challenge. And I'll see you tomorrow. So tomorrow is also very important. I'm going to be teaching you the four-step system to help you manage your energy. Right. The biggest problem I hear from my empaths and students is that they feel their energy is being drained by people or they don't know how to manage their energy levels. They always feel tired and overexhaust themselves. And if this is the case for you, don't miss tomorrow's challenge. To prepare for tomorrow's challenge, make sure you go into your inbox once you've registered for this challenge to download the energy recharge kit. Okay, it's a 27 page beautiful PDF that I've put together. So let's get started just to know the material and we'll go over it together tomorrow. Thank you for joining me today and I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good day. Bye.